I recently had a conversation with a nurse who used to work in an infirmary at a convent. And her job was to be with the sisters at the end of their lives. And she told me that one nun told her one day while they were in the room together that she was afraid to die. And the nurse talked to her and comforted her and she said, I told her, the Blessed Mother comes for us. And, and since you've been praying with her your whole life, you're going to recognize her. She's going to take you home. And it will be beautiful. Two days later, that nun could not wait to see that nurse. She said, I had a dream last night. And Mary came to me. And she said, I'm going to take you home. And she died later that day, peacefully. Mary comes for us. And since we've been praying to her all these years, we recognize her. And she recognizes us. She takes us home. And it's beautiful. We all know deep down that Mary is a big part of heaven. We might not be able to put words to that, but we know that that's true. And one of the ways that we prove it is by teaching a prayer to our children that the more we think about, the more we start to focus on how unusual the words are, the more it shows how strong this belief is. We teach our children from the youngest age, before they can even understand the words, that they should pray that Mary will look upon us, us sinners, every moment of our life, but especially at the hour of our death. We teach little children that. Wouldn't you think that that would be too scary to get them to talk about the hour of their death from the youngest age? But we do that because of today's feast. We believe that Mary was ushered straight into heaven. She never died. Instead of dying, when the time came that her life was full, God brought her right to heaven without undergoing death. She's the only one in the history of the world who ever did that. Even Jesus didn't do that. So why did God arrange it this way? Why did God make the plan that Mary would not die, but would be ushered, body and soul, into heaven? God could have done it differently. She could have died and risen from the dead in some beautiful story. Why didn't she die? I remember when I was a little kid, my first weeks of preschool, and I have a feeling that everybody remembers that because I wasn't just a crier, I was a screamer. My poor teacher. It started off great. I was fine. We walked into the orientation, and so my mother and I were put on these little stools with everybody else and their mothers, and we were getting to play little games and clap our hands, and that was fine. And then they said, okay, it's time for all the mommies to leave. That was not okay. No, no, no. As long as she was there, I was fine. I'll play games, I'll meet new kids, but I want my mother right there. When I knew that the, the new room I was walking into had my mother in it, no problem. But if my mother wasn't with me, I wanted no part of it. And that's why God gave us the Feast of the Assumption. He did it for that nun, and for me, and for you. What the Feast of the Assumption tells us is, when we get there, wherever there is, whatever it's like, mind-blowing, can't understand it, when we get there, we're going to see her. 
and we're going to recognize her because she's going to look exactly as we've always known her. And she will bring us in. And she will be there with arms wide open. And it will be beautiful. It won't be scary. It won't be unknown. We may not understand everything else. We may have to adjust to the new experience of being outside of time and space. But God wanted us to know that our mother will be there and her arms will be open, and we will recognize her, and it will be beautiful. What a beautiful gift that nurse gave to that sister. The gift of faith that she'd had since she was a child, but just couldn't access at that moment. The faith that tells us, Mary comes for us, and we've been praying with her all along, so it's not scary or unexpected. It's being reunited with our mother, and it's beautiful. The Feast of the Assumption helps us to understand better the proverb that while being carried in its mother's arms, the child's journey home is never long.